Welcome back to part 4 of the video series. This video part is about how to program the PLCs in accordance with the experimental setup. This part will finally explain how to program the PLCs. For your understanding, we have two application solutions in two separate videos. The first one is a very simple application, which is able to solve the basic problem. On this very simple application, I will explain to you what exactly it is you have to do to get to a solution. The task is to move the motor through the CAN bus interface of the STG 570 CAN and the STG 700 step by triggering the potentiometer. Later on I will show you what issues that basic application is causing in the setup, how to fix those issues and how to program the LEDs. You can find both applications or download next to the video. So let's start programming. We will start with the STG700 step. The PLC is connected with the computer over a USB cable. Simply connect the PC with the PLC. The driver will automatically be installed on your computer. Run MyConnell, select the right COM port and create a new project. Select the STG700 template and type in the name of the project. Up left is the blinking status LED. It is pre-programmed and we will just leave it like that. Up right we will implement the CAN control block where the baud rate is configured and the controller status is given out. At the input of the CAN control block we have a button. By pressing the button the CAN control function block is reset. On the output of this CAN controller, there is a visualization block, which shows the state of the block. It has no function in the target system. Now we will program the main part of the STG700 application. The first function block is the CAN receive block. As the name already implies, it receives CAN messages. This block has the same CAN ID as the CAN send function block in the application of the STG570. In our case, we chose 512. We will assign the name stepper control to the CAN function block. The name has no function in the target system, but it is important for documentation purposes. The name is for the receive information. Type in the name and assign the right data type, in our case long. Now select the function block SEPA motor control. Parameter dialog will open. You can just leave it at full step for now. Connect the two blocks. Now, for our first try, we will assign a step rate of 100 to the SEPA motor. The enable input has to be set to true. Finally, we will add visualization box to be able to see the values after downloading the application on the controller in online mode. Download the application on the controller. You will see the application in online mode. As we have already downloaded the application of the STG570 on the other controller, you can see what is being processed on the STG700 when twisting the potentiometer. That is it for a simple application of the STG700. Now we will program the STG570 CAN. 
Connect the PLC with the computer over a USB cable. Create a new project for the SDG 570. Up left there is the blinking status LED again and up right there is the CAN controller function block. First we will implement an analog input on the worksheet. Select the input which is physically used for the potentiometer. This input function block gives back the digitalized voltage of the potentiometer. Now we will do some simple mathematical operations to calculate the steps having up to 24 volts from the potentiometer and 0 to 200 steps from the stepper motor, as we have selected full steps. The stepper motor has to do 200 steps for a 360 degree rotation, as one step equals 1.8 degrees for this motor. Following, there is the calculation for the transformation of the voltage value into steps. We divide the incoming voltage value by 24 and multiply it by 200 to achieve the amount of steps that should be taken. We implement the convert block to convert the data type from float to long. Finally, we will implement the CAN transmit function block. Assign the CAN ID 512, similar to the CAN receive function block in the STG700 application. Name the block and the message type being sent and match the data type. Connect the function blocks and assign the global variable true to the send input. Set the cycle time to 50 milliseconds to both programs, the one for the STG 570 can and also for the STG 700 step. Go into run mode and go into the configuration level. Right click on the controller image and go to task properties. Assign a cycle time of 50 milliseconds. To be able to see some values while in online mode, we will implement some visualization blocks. Again, those blocks do not have function on the target system, they will only visualize the values. Now download the application on the controller. When moving the potentiometer now, you will see the values given out by the visualization blocks. So now, the application is basically running, but there are some things that are kind of bugging us. The noise and the inconsistently running motor. How to fix those issues, have a look at our next video.